Good morning, this is Marcus here and I'm in my beautiful ID3. Now it is Thursday morning and I'm actually on my way to Lisbon. I'm actually starting from the Margin Sul or my home in Moita, which is actually a normal commute from um, Moita or the Margin Sul to Lisbon and back again. So we're going to see how well the ID3 performs on that task and how much I spend and how much energy we use. Now it is currently as you can see here it's currently 12 degrees celsius i don't know if you can see outside but there's puddles on the road so there was actually heavy rain last night but another thing i want to test is how good is the navigation system because i've had many people ask me how good is the navigation system in the id3 and i'm going to a clinic i've never been before in lisbon so we're going to type in the address and as you know lisbon is a good place it's a good place to get lost let's check out the navigation system so as you can see currently i've done four kilometers from my house um and the average consumption has been 18.8 kilowatt hours per 100. So let's get into navigation system. Just to let you know, this is the first software in the ID3. This software has never been updated. It's the earliest version of the software, so I don't have the software update. So we're just testing the first version of the navigation system. It will only get better. New destination, city, Lisbon. Lisbon, it's got it. Street, Alameda. Let's see like this. So it's Alameda das Linhas. That's it there. So I've got the street now. Um, enter the house number. So the, I haven't really used the uh, navigation that much. But let's enter the house number. Oh, here you have to go down there and choose that one. Yeah. So um, let's say start. It says 25 minutes. So if I make this bigger, you will see where I currently am. So currently I'm here, as you can see, near Montijo. Um, and that's my house here. And we're going to have to cross this big bridge here to get to this clinic here which is not in the center of Lisbon it's just on the outskirts of Lisbon so this is a normal commute because there's a lot of commuters live in this region here and obviously they go to work in Lisbon on a daily basis so we're going to see how much this costs us in the ID3 so let's get going then the it has gone up to 24.7 which is high because we've had the heater on and I've probably been here with 729 now for at least 10 or 15 minutes while I've been setting up the cameras. So we're on our way to Lisbon. So as you can see, the map's working fine. There's no issues so far. Um, and this is the commute. So I think this test is gonna be very interesting. If you do actually live in the margin soil and you do uh, travel to Lisbon daily to see how much uh, cost saving you can be made. And if you can do this in a relaxing way on the ID3. I don't know if you can see this here on the camera, but it's actually telling me to turn right here towards Lisbon. That's what I'm doing. And here it's telling me to turn right as well. So as I have shown you, there are two main bridges the commuters use from the margin soul to get to Lisbon. One of them is this bridge, the Vasco da Gama, and the other one is the other bridge, the 25th of April. Now I tend to go to work on this bridge and come back on the other bridge. My house is about the same distance from both but this bridge normally has less traffic in the morning. So for electric vehicles, before 10 o'clock in the morning, it gives me a 10% discount on the bridge, just for electric vehicles. It gives me a 20% reduction on the bridge after 10 o'clock. Um, the discounts on the other bridge, the 25th of April bridge, are actually bigger, but I can't remember what they are off the top of my head. So normally I would pay two euros and 85 so i'm going to get a 10 percent discount on that so about 28p now hopefully it should be my number plate it has so it's working so my card's car's been registered it's the first time i've actually used it um so that's good it's actually showing us um where there's traffic and when there's roadworks and stuff so um it is connected to the internet so we'll show you where traffic is and it will be there's a nice Tesla Model 3 there, a nice black one, that does look nice. So ID3 has overtaken a Tesla Model 3. ID3 for the win, hoo hoo. Actually in black it did look nice, that Tesla Model 3. Yeah, I will. it did look nice in black. And this is actually a perfect test because um, like petrol and diesel cars, um, electric cars don't work so well in the cold. They use more energy. Uh, because you've got the heater on, because the batteries are cold, etc. And because the roads are wet, um, we, we're getting more friction from the roads. So this is like a worst case scenario of commuting to Lisbon and coming back again in these weather conditions. In the summer, the efficiency will be better. 
um, and you will get lower uh, and you will get better efficiency. But this is just to see, can we do this comfortably and easily, commute to work and back in the ID3 if we're headed towards Lisbon and we're going from the margin stall. And as, I, and as I'm so confident, I didn't even charge the car up fully. I started at 71%. What's the percentage now? 61%, so I've used 10% to do 23 kilometers. And considering a lot of that time was sat in the car with a heater on, while I was faffing around with a GoPro and showing you stuff, I think that's quite good so far. Hello ID, I'm feeling cold. No problem, it will get warmer at the front left shortly. It's detected 70 sign there, and as you can see, active cruise control is reducing the speed now to 70 kilometers an hour. So because of adaptive cruise control, I won't get to find driving too quickly. I don't know if you can see that, but now we're going down a hill and we get quite a nice scenic view. Actually going down this hill, if you can see that there, the green bar means the car's regenerating energy. Please keep left in 1,000 meters towards IC17 Lisboa Centru. Please keep left. Let's go left then. Oh, in Lisbon, Lisboa, woohoo! Then the thousand meters, I have to turn right. Uh, I will try to get over to the right hand side line if this traffic allows me to. That's where acceleration comes in. So I guess that's a bus line. Yeah. It should be bus and EV line. Yeah. We should do Lisbon, allow EVs to go in the bus line. That will annoy the buses. Oh, oh, there seems to be a problem here. It's typical of a commute to Lisbon is that you often get problems. Traffic jams and things, but obviously because there's not much traffic today, this one is not too bad. Somebody let me in, that was nice. There seems to be an accident. Which is very co common on commutes to Lisbon. Please turn slight right at the traffic light and continue to follow Avenida Padre Cruz and then turn left. Slightly right at the traffic light, does that mean I have to go to the bus line? This is what always confuses me. So, say going on to this Avenida, now someone else, I think because I've got this, that means I can go in Now here. take the second slight right and then turn left towards Alvashlin Yesh Torash. Second slight right, is that this one here, is it? No, it's not this one here, so I've got lost already. So this is me, bad me. So I've got lost already because I have no idea where I am. So I guess this is always the now issue. Now turn right onto Lago Julio de Castillo. So it's going to take me back round again. So that's my fault. It's actually showing me here, but because I'm in Lisbon and it's slightly stressed, um, because I don't know this region, there's a bit of traffic. I'm going to have to go around there again. I'm not sure it's a GPS because the GPS was actually telling me correctly, but it's always an issue. I always stuck at this red traffic light. But if it'll be a small diversion around again. I just hope it's not too bad. But this always happens when you're in big cities and where a part you don't know well. Because I really don't know this part of Lisbon because I have never been to this part of Lisbon. That's this area it is. I've got a nice diversion, isn't it? Attention, so, road be nice... closed on street, Rua do Alcadal. Well, there's a road Please make now. a U-turn now and continue to follow Rua do Alcadal. So I'm going to have to make a U-turn in this nice church. Well, let's go up in this nice church and turn around there, shall we? Hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's a good diversion because it comes to some nice old place. Please make a U-turn in 150 meters so and tourism. continue to follow Estrada do Which we're not allowed to do actually at the moment, but because I'm getting lost. So we're going to drive around the cross, this old cross in this nice church in Lisbon. The traditional Portuguese church by the looks of things. And then, I guess we can go down here. I don't see any... Now turn there. left and Sorry. continue to follow Lago da São João Bautista. Now turn left and continue to follow Lago da São João Bautista. Okay, so um, it's annoying me and, uh, with all this talking now, this navigation, but I guess most navigations are like that. Turn the sound off. Um, so let's, there's a green light now, so let's see if we can go across there. Looks like they're redoing this road. Um, so yeah, so hopefully this was just a short diversion and we'll be back. Now on turn the right bridge. onto Rua do Alcadão. I'll turn right. To this road here. Um, Please so yeah. turn left in 150 well, meters towards Alvashlin Yeshto Rush. So I think we're going to go back onto the road where it's meant to go on. So this was Attention, my fault. pedestrian zone ahead. Oh, Attention, me. limited access ahead. 
Oh, it's now just me left about towards pedestrians, Liege, And you see Togos. the blue line going across there? Oh, that's quite good. It gives me warnings about pedestrians. Like I said, I've never really driven this car in Lisbon because of COVID. Um, so it's actually, it's quite good fun. <laughs> just imagine that I've done this without polluting the atmosphere. So I've come into Lisbon as a clean car and I'm not polluting Lisbon like the other cars. Turn left. Now turn there. left onto so Estrada the Toma. Light again. Yeah, so navigation is working. It was just me who wasn't working navigation, but this is a... a Often you do this in big cities because it's very confusing because you see there's roads and junctions and everything everywhere. It's hard to concentrate on this and that at the same time. I guess I need a car that drives on its own that it can work it all out. Actually, another thing, in Lisbon now, I haven't applied for the card, but you can apply for a card and EV get, EVs get free parking in most public parking places in Lisbon, normally where you have to pay a lot of money, EVs actually get free parking there and you actually can apply for it with Imal I believe, I think it costs about 15 euros to get the sticker and it lasts a year, um, so you stick a sticker on your car window to say that you've got free parking and you don't have to pay the parking meters, it's another advantage of having an EV if you're coming to Lisbon. So it's gone down to 20.1 kilowatt hours, at least 10 or 15 minutes of those and me faffing around with a heater on, so it should in fact be lower. We've done 37 kilometres. So now turn left and continue to follow Rua de Reykjavik in Paraguay. Please make a U-turn now and continue to follow oh, Rua de Reykjavik in Paraguay. So Attention, pedestrian zone ahead. Now turn right and continue to follow Rua de Reykjavik in Paraguay. Attention, well, tell her to pedestrian shut her zone ahead. So you shut her up like that, so that's so much better. Wait a minute, in this area here you have to pay parking, so I'm going to see over there if you don't pay parking. This is paid parking, so I will have to pay it I guess. Uh, I don't have this sticker, so it's free, but anyway. So let's go home then. So I've gone to the clinic quickly, so let's go home. So here I do navigation announcements again. Click home, see if it finds a route. So we're going to go on this route to go on the other bridge. You can see what the other bridge looks like. Um, yeah. So start. So testing navigation again. So because I didn't have the disc on my car window, I had to actually buy a parking ticket. It goes to 10 o'clock. It's only 8.32 now. Um, and that cost one euro. But just over there, like literally 20 meters away, there's an electric charge port, um, an AC one. So I could have actually charged my car, paid for the charging, but not paid for the parking. So it's literally just there, the charge port. I do not need to charge the car because, because currently I'm at 55% more than enough to get home. Even though both chargers were empty, I didn't really want to block it just in case two people did turn up and they did need to charge. And if I was blocking it, that would make me feel bad. So I'd rather pay the parking then to pay the charge and then block the charger for somebody else who may actually need it. So obviously, if I came to Lisbon more often than I'm doing currently, I would actually get the disc for electric vehicles that you put in the car. And, and that parking point there would have actually have been free. Now look, you see here on the route, it's telling us that there has uh, been an accident. Here you've got the sign there, so it's telling us exactly where that is. It's saying it will take 37 minutes to get home. I actually know where we are now. Oh Makes change for me. So as you can see, we're going over a much shorter bridge now. Here. And this is the 25th of April bridge. You see that there? That's um, an aqueduct that I don't think it works anymore, but it used to take water into Lisbon. So it's an old aqueduct. I think it's built in the 18th or 17th century. I can't remember the date. So we're driving under the aqueduct now. So over there, there's the bridge I'm going to go on. It does look like the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. So now, anyway, we're going over the bridge. So we've just gone over the bridge and we're the other side of Lisbon now, and we can go back up to 120 kilometers an hour. So that's what I'm going to do. So we've got 25 kilometers until I get here. I've got 149 kilometers on the gun. So this is fine. So my house is very close to here now. As you can see, the navigation has worked perfectly. And we have done a very easy commute from the Margin Sol to Lisbon and back again. And that journey has been 74 kilometers. So by the time I get home, um, it'll probably be about 80 kilometers. 
Um, the average has been 18.5 kilowatt hours per 100. As you can see, the weather conditions are not perfect today, and we have been able to drive at 120 kilometers on the motorway where possible, so it has been a mix of motorway. The average speed has just been 54 kilometers an hour, because we did do a lot of city driving as well, and I think that takes into account the fact I was sat in the car for 10 or 15 minutes while I was messing around with the GoPros uh, with a heater on. Let's have a look at Greater Lisbon then. So in this area around here, I live here in Moita, there's lots of people that commute to Lisbon every day for work. And also around this area here, um, you know, Sintra, Cascais, this area here, there's lots of people who commute every day to Lisbon to work. But on this trip, uh, I went to a clinic which was around here, went from my house here, along here, along this motorway here, this is all motorway, along there, down there, and up here to this area here. Then we came back somewhere through there, down this motorway here, across there, along this motorway. So as you can see, a lot of the trip is actually motorway. So total distance traveled was 79 kilometers on this trip and that's equivalent to 49 miles. So in the ID3, I used 16.24 kilowatt hours of electricity. That accounted to 29% of the battery. Now just to say, this was cold day, worst weather, wet roads, so it used a bit more battery than we expected. So at 16.24 kilowatt hours, um, where each kilowatt hour costs 12 cents, if you're if you're lucky enough to be able to charge at home, this would be the charging price at night because the charging price in the day would be 20 cents, but as you can set the car to charge at night, it will be 12 cents. That will be one euro and 95. The WLTP range of my ID3 first is 420 kilometers. But with tests I've done, this means that even in cold, bad weather on motorway trips, you can get a range of 250 kilometers. If your daily commute round trip is less than 250 kilometers, even in bad weather, the ID3 would be the perfect car for you. Now, let's look at petrol cars. I'm choosing a petrol 95 car six liters per hundred kilometers and we'll see a bit later why i chose a car of six liters per hundred kilometers but i think on a daily commute to lisbon this is the expected uh, petrol values that you should get that we use 4.74 liters the cost of the trip was seven euros and 77 pence so today's price of petrol is 1.64 euros per liter so total cost fueling per day of driving my id3 over a petrol car is five euros and 82 Obviously, things are not that simple because we've got public charging. So if you do not have charging at home, then you'll have to rely on public charging. Now, the car park I stayed in in the video was about 20 meters away from this public charger. So I've decided to choose this one. And in the Amazing Mirror app in Portugal, I've gone from 0% to 29%. So here it's told me that the cost would be €4.64. Euros and 64. Now, there may be cheaper chargers and there may be more expensive public charge you have to look in the Mio app and find out which ones are for you and that would have given me a fuel saving of three euros in 13 instead of fuel saving of five euros and 82 so obviously there's an advantage if you're fortunate enough to be able to charge at home so let's look at the savings versus a petrol car so daily saving for home charging is five euros and 82 and for public charging that's three euros and 13 so if we look at a five day working week, the saving is 29.10 euros over petrol for the home charging or 15 euros, 65 euros for public charging. If we look at um, monthly cost saving, that's 20 days more or less, 116 euros a month um, on home charging or 62 euros a month on public charging, just fuel cost savings. So yearly, we've got a massive 1,280 euros saving for home charging and a quite a large 688 euros saving for public charging. So this is just on fuel, these savings you should expect on this trip of 79 kilometers daily commute to Lisbon. There's something else I talked about in the video and that's parking in Lisbon. So this is email, the Stico Verde, which is a green sticker you put on your car. Now this costs 12 euros a year and is only available for electric vehicles. Now we're talking about the parking spot I went to, which is quite on the outskirts of Lisbon. The closer you get to central Lisbon, obviously more expensive parking get, but it's free for all email zones all over Lisbon. So even in the central Lisbon, you can get free parking with an electric vehicle. So for the pet at the parking place, 
we stayed at, that was one euro equals two hours. So if you go to work for eight hours, have one lunch for one hour, that's a nine hour period, you're at work, so that would cost four euros fifty a day. Here are all the costs, but as you can see, over a year you will spend a massive 990 euros on parking at that spot an electric vehicle you pay basically zero or just a 12 euros per year now we went over the bridge so there's toll savings to have but these are less significant uh, because you've got something called the veer card which gives you a discount for petrol cars the cars and then you get the veer card eco that gives you a bigger discount for electric vehicles now the daily saving over a petrol vehicle is small um, and it counts to about 19 euros 80 a year on the 25th of April bridge that was the second bridge that looked like the San Francisco bridge and the longer bridge you get to save another 33 euros a year obviously these are very small discounts but uh, you know every penny counts if we include the parking savings and the bridge savings you save a massive 2603 euros a year um, if you do home charging over a petrol or diesel vehicle and if you do public charging you save um, 1711 euros per year on public charging quite significant savings but let's look at the bigger picture here so I don't want to talk about the ID3 because it's an expensive car that cost 38,000 euros so I want to talk about the cheapest electric vehicle you can currently buy in Portugal and this is the Twingo Zen and that has a WLTP range of 190 kilometers so I basically think this car in bad weather for a commute to Lisbon of less than 100 kilometers you won't need to use public charging you can charge at home go to work and return and there will be no issues with range or anything so this is the same car the Zen petrol car and that just costs 12,590 euros so let's have a look at this so we've got the Twingo EV now if we look at four year fuel costs let's imagine you keep the car for four years and then you want to sell it so four year fuel cost of home charging with the Twingo EV is 1,716 euros and the Twingo petrol cost on today's petrol price is going to be 6,838 euros. The depreciation over four years is going to be 40%. I think it's going to be much more than 40% on Twingo petrol and Twingo EV because I honestly believe in four years time nobody's going to want to buy a second hand petrol car. A second hand electric vehicle is going to be much more attractive. So depreciation is 5,036 euros on the petrol Twingo at 40% and at 40% it's 8,800 euros for the Twingo EV. Now I haven't included maintenance costs but I don't want to know what they are but the maintenance costs are always higher on a petrol vehicle than electric vehicle so we can conclude that the maintenance costs are going to be higher for the Twingo petrol but I haven't included those in this estimation. So total cost of ownership, if you add the fuel cost to the cost of depreciation over four years, is 10,596 euros. And if you look at the Twingo petrol, it's 11,874 euros. As you can see already, the cost of ownership is 1,000 euros less in the Twingo EV compared to Twingo petrol. Actually, I think in reality it's going to be closer to two or 3,000 euros difference due to maintenance and due to quicker depreciation of the petrol car. Now, I did not include parking and bridge toll costs for Lisbon. Now, I don't know if this is going to be like this for the next four years or if suddenly parking will become expensive as well for electric vehicles. But let's just imagine it's going to be like that for the next four years. To pay the parking, you have to pay 12 euros a year for the disc in Lisbon. That comes to 48 euros for the electric vehicle. Over four years for the petrol vehicle, this parking location, you have to see which parking location you have to pay for, but at this location, parking location you will and the extra bridge cost you will pay a massive 4092 euros so that means the daily commute total cost of ownership over four years for the electric vehicle is 10,644 euros where the total cost of ownership for the Twingo petrol over four years is 16,000 euros so even though the initial price looks much higher in the Twingo EV almost 10,000 euros higher uh, compared to the petrol over a four year year period you You've got over a five thousand euro saving thank you again for watching please click subscribe because i do have other plans and i do plan to do a live stream from a one thousand kilometers